the huge cost of climate impact in 2019 and 2018. So as we enter into 2019, we've got to be prepared for climate change. Look, it's it's a reality. We have to deal with these new dangerous uh, environmental disasters. So a uh, recent report has come out that um, right now more environmental disasters are costing more than $1 billion each, some costing more than $7 billion. And there's currently across the world, for example, in Europe, suffering from massive heat waves that are systematically affecting the economy of the European Union and member nations are part of it. In Japan, there were extremes uh, summer and uh, uh, flooding uh, happening over there that caused a huge impact. One of the floods killed at least 230 people and caused about $7 billion worth of damage, which were then followed by another typhoon, uh, probably the most powerful storm to hit the country in 25 years. Um, the plan is readjusting to the immense uh, carbon uh, dioxide that's being put into the atmosphere due to our use and reliance on fossil fuels. And look, I understand completely that we need to have energy to move our cars and power our homes, but this reliance on fossil fuels is clearly having an economic and environmental impact. So I'm concerned about it, and I think a lot of us should really look at just how these weather patterns are going to be a part of our livelihoods. We are already dealing with these massive hurricanes that are striking the East Coast and the West Coast, and you know, or at least on the West Coast, we're having like dangerous fires, forest fires, and everything like that. But they're going to cost more money, and systematically, I can imagine how people are going to be displaced. We're going to be dealing with a lot of refugees and people leaving areas that are no longer habitable. So I think that a lot of uh, I mean, uh, obviously everything Kit said is, is, is not just true, but it's also, uh, it'll get worse. So right now, we're already seeing, we've, you know, people have been like, oh, well, where are these giant floods you're talking about? Well, there are parts of Florida that it'll, it'll rain too hard and they'll be underwater. That's already happening. We're already, I mean, think of all the, all the unrest and people, especially on the right, how upset they were about uh, immigration due to the Syrian civil war, which, you know, a lot of it was uh, due to us destabilizing the region. But that aside, that's only a few million people. That's not that many people that we're talking about in the worldwide context. What happens when 50 million people can't live on uh, a coast because it's now ocean? What happens when infrastructure that is not supposed to be underwater, such as nuclear power plants, start going underwater. This is something that I think humans have for the thousands of years we've existed in society. It's never been a question, a scale of a question that we've had to deal with. The closest thing that we've had to deal with are maybe world wars, but those don't even cover what we're dealing with in right. terms of scale and what's happening. But it's also important to note out too that there's another issue uh, that we have to deal with, and that's currently this administration is refusing to talk about climate change, and the, and and they refuse to acknowledge it, or and they even say, say that it's all being faked up, it's all fake information. And the truth is that the rest of the international community is moving forward to really address the potential changes that we may all have to deal with as a planet. And I fear that the United States may be behind on this because we got to remember too that the fossil fuel lobby has a large influence on both the establishment Republicans and the establishment Democrats. It's, a, it's an issue that we have to deal with in our neoliberal political system. And in order for us to really effectively deal with climate change, we have to get money out of politics. Because the fossil fuel industry, they knew about the, damage, the danger of our over-reliance on fossil fuel, but yet they did nothing. They, were, they kept it quiet. They kept it silent. Um, and even the, discover, even the military has stated that climate change is something that is a danger to our national security. So if we're not going to step up and end money in politics, we're going to be dealing with a world that is going to be very different than the one we grew up in. And let's look at all the other dangers. Not only we're looking at people being displaced, but what is it going to do to our resources, our reliance on food sources? Um, areas where we get our wheat, our grain, our food, our, our livestock, you name it, uh, can be systematically impacted. Water reservoirs could evaporate. And then you got massive starvation. This is a reality we have to deal with. And we as an advanced nation, we should have a system in place to make sure that uh, we can uh, you know, adapt to the changes that are clearly going to happen to this planet. But until we get money out of politics, um, 
we're not going to see it, and we have to do something now. That's why I always say we got to step up to do something. Now, I want to also add another economic argument. I think that for many people, this this is an un- unnecessary. They're already like, yes, we got to do something about it. Why aren't we doing something about it? So another economic argument for this is that there is going to be, right now, just like before in the industrial era, the countries, Britain is a good example, that industrialized quickly, controlled the world. In the U.S., we've done we've been at the forefront of many of these innovations. Uh, technology with computers has mm-hmm. put us in the control of every major social media network is uh, networked and uh, created in California or in the U.S. in a bigger scale. So that's important. That's how you maintain your your uh, your your empire, your superiority through technology and economy. What happens when China is the one that sells the world solar panels because they're the ones that put the money in place to mass produce them and the technology so they can build them better, faster, stronger, cheaper than the U.S. can? Well, what's going to happen is that this very expensive process of taking the trillions of dollars that have been invested in oil and shifting it to an equal amount in solar, if not more. Because at the same time all this is happening, the energy demands of the world are increasing. You have countries that people didn't have electricity a dozen dozen years ago are now starting to use it. So you're going to have throughout the entire planet worldwide power demands just increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing so fast. Whoever is able to feed that need will make a lot of money and rule the next 50 years, 100 years of energy production. And right now, China lays out a football field of solar panels, I think, every minute, whereas the U.S. is denying that climate change even exists. And it's, it's, so it's a danger. So China's going to be years ahead of us on something that I think the U.S. should have taken charge of years ago. If the U.S. had led on this, had broken with the alliance that they had with fossil fuels, had not blocked subsidies mm. to uh, solar panels and uh, preserved them for oil, the U.S. could very easily be that country like it used to be. The reason that Europe is so aligned with us is because of the Marshall Plan. The same with Japan. is because if you do things a certain way, if you have that mindset of we have to control the world, this is shooting yourself in the foot in the long term by making a few extra bucks in the short term. Yeah, the U.S. is the biggest exporter, one of the biggest exporters of fossil fuels at the moment, but so what? You're just reinvesting in old tech that, of course, you know how to do well when the future is going to be different and that technology is not going to be all that relevant. And final note on this, uh, it's very important for everyone to understand that as these storms and you know environmental dangers become more costly, it's going to systematically hurt our economy, it's going to displace people, and it's going to get to the point to where Areas where there were once settlements and cities and towns are going to be just too expensive to rebuild. And if we want to end it, we have to definitely step up to address the real danger of climate change. And if we want to preserve this world, we have to take responsibility and try and fix it. But 